me take you inside the mind of one of the most evil men in America. He's a notorious and admitted serial killer. And in the last 48 hours, his story has come to a dramatic conclusion. We got a rare and chilling interview with him for our series, Crime and Punishment. The first time I killed somebody, and it was such a rush. Tommy Lynn Selms, one of the most infamous serial killers in modern history, a man who says he belongs on death row. I was raised to do time. I wasn't raised to live out there in, in that world. Sells was convicted of killing 13-year-old Katie Harris, stabbing her to death in her bedroom. I like to use a knife. A, a gun is too, too violent, too, too, too noisy, but just fit my hand well. And later, he admitted to killing dozens more. So many, he says he can't even keep track. I'm not Billy the Kid making notches on, on my, my uh, holster, so I know it's been a lot. Addicted to killing is the way he characterized it. I, I don't have an on and off switch. I'm just after that drug. I'm after that feeling. Nightline interviewed Cells on death row in 2010 one of the rare glimpses into the mind of a serial killer. It's complicated. It's, uh, <laughs> when people enter my life, they get hurt. Sells is directly linked to over a dozen murders. The drifter's vagrant lifestyle helped him elude police for nearly 15 years as victims turned up from coast to coast. When you look at me, you know what hate is because I don't know what love is. Two words I don't like to use is love and sorry, because I'm about hate. His methods for killing were as random as the people he targeted. He raped many before cutting their throats or beating them. Stabbing others, he strangled some. A lot of jerking, a lot of movement. It's a physical, you become part of it. And described it all with seeming detachment from the horrors he caused. I don't have no feelings. No more, no emotion, no... And no remorse. And I like to watch the eyes fade, the pupil fade. It, it's just like setting their soul free. We asked Sells what would happen if we said something that angered him. If we was in a fight and, you know, get your head down in the concrete, then, you know, so be it. But. Well, what do you think happened? It cracks like a coconut. So how did he become this monster? Sells blames much of his murderous rage on sexual abuse he says he suffered as a child. I think every time I killed, I killed that guy that molested me all them years. I seen that in my mind over and over. Yet children were among his victims. I didn't want him to live through the pain I lived through. I tried to get in this door right here. It was Katie Harris's murder that finally ended his killing spree. Two days later, Tommy Lynn Sells walked police through the crime scene. And I opened the window all the way up, well, about like this. Uh -huh. And I climbed in. Okay. We kind of stayed up a little later, and we got in a little fight about where we were all going to sleep. We laid there and talked, I bet. Um, we talked about the time, like, Britney Spears in NSYNC. Crystal Searles, 10 years old at the time, is one of his few survivors. She was sleeping over at Katie's house that night. More than a decade later, it's all still fresh in her memory. I woke up startled a little bit and out of nowhere, and I was kind of confused, um, to a loud noise. I woke this girl up. Her friend Katie was asleep on the bottom bunk. I cut her bra. And I could see that there was this scary old older man that I'd never seen before. I stabbed her here, and then she like jumped back, and then, then I cut her like, like this right here. And he had a hand on her mouth and the knife on her neck, and she's looking at me, and he just cut her throat, and she right fell here. to the ground. And she fell down right here. 13-year-old Katie Harris lay dying on the floor. He was about to shut off the light, and he looked one last time and he noticed that I was there. And he didn't hesitate at all. I mean, just shut the door, came right back towards me with the knife. And I walked over here and I went like this. 
The only thing that he said is, move your hands, because I had him up here, and uh, he reached over the top bunk and cut my, cut my neck. Cell sliced Crystal's neck, severing her windpipe and grazing her carotid artery. I am very sure he thought he killed me. Crystal Searles identified Tommy Lynn Sells as the assailant. To be honest, he seemed blank. I mean, there was no emotion. Psychopaths are individuals who lack conscience, they lack remorse, they lack guilt. And that's one of the reasons why they terrorize society so much. They Experts like much Dr. Clear. Adrian Raines say Sells offers a textbook example, the mind of a serial killer. He's been studying how and why the adorable little boys pictured here turned into brutal killers. Could it have been the makeup of their brains? It's biology coming together with environmental insults which raise the odds of an individual becoming a violent criminal offender. Recent research suggests that psychopathy may actually be evident in the brain and that a simple brain scan could reveal key differences in the minds of serial killers. It's only recently with the advent of molecular genetics and brain imaging techniques that we've been able to peer into the minds of murderers really for the first time. But for some of the families of his victims, ending that brain function was what was important. Sells was on death row for more than 13 years. The most recent delay? Over the exact makeup of the drug cocktail that would be used to kill him. Sells said the pain of the death penalty paled in comparison to his life. I suffer more here than I'll ever suffer in that grave. I have to live with it every day now. When they kill me, at least I'll be free then. Last night, Tommy Lynn Sell's final appeal was rejected. He was executed at 6.27 p.m. When asked if he wanted to make a last statement, uh, he just simply answered no. For the family of Katie Harris, it was long overdue. Now it's a day of closure and celebration. The justice has been served.